crime is a huge problem in London at the moment. Thousands of youths have committed crime over the past 10 years. In this documentary, we're going to find out what, why these youths commit crime and how Barnet are dealing with it. This is Barnet Crime Watch. High Street and we're going, to talk, we're going to talk to members of the public about what they feel about youth crime. The police are doing enough? Um, yeah, yeah um, I think certain, certain areas they're doing really well mm. but um, in, in, other, in other areas more severe they, te they, tend, to help, they tend to help people that um, they tend to help people in more particular areas than others. What, would your, what are your opinions on youth crime? Well, I'm mean, not in favour of it. <laughs> what, what, what specifically do you want to know? Um, in Barnet, do you think it's bad? Is enough being done? Um, I only work in Barnet and I can't say as I've actually seen any crime taking place. You read the newspapers and you get a different story. So. Personally speaking, I feel quite happy walking around Barnet. I feel safe. I, I don't feel that there's a big problem. Hi there, we're going to be talking to a former offender, Muzzy. Can you tell me what you did? Uh, yeah, I was drunk that night and I was fucking out my head. So what I did is like, my mate stared me. And when you're drunk, you know, you do anything you fucking want. So, you know, yeah. it then to some old bitch's back. And me being drunk, I did. So I took the bitch's bag and then she grabbed my leg and I was like thinking, what do I do? So, you know, I gave the bitch a few punches to get off me, I squeezed her wrist and there's some police was on duty and, you know, he, he has a cricket bat on him so he hit me over the head with a cricket bat. Oh, you mean the truncheon? I see a family trunk there, you know, like, I wake up in the cell with a fat hangover. And I found out I've got to be there for two months for assault. So, um, do you think now you've done it, do you think that was the right thing to do? No, I've cleaned my head, so now I think back, if I do see that lady, you know, I'd, you know, I say sorry to her, I'm like, more than sorry because, you know, it's not, it's not just anything, I'll beat up and sit like an old lady, it's bad. So, before your crime, before you were in prison, uh, what's your background, may I ask? It's been kind of fucked up. And my brother, John, my grandma, yeah, she died, she was fucking murdered. Oh, my brother, and my dad, he robbed the bank. And yeah, he chat so much shit. Yeah, my brother killed himself. So do you think that's the main reason for you committing crime, the way you were brought up? Yeah, I think my brother just showed me that like, if you're angry or, you know, if you can do whatever you want, you know, you can just kill anyone you want. Or, but I know what I'm in the wrong. I know I've done something wrong and I'm going to try to put my life, you know, straight now. Mm. So you said earlier you were drunk. Um, how old were you then? I was 16 years old. Yeah, I was uh, done for a so then. And I've been, ever since then, I've been having counselling. So, what do you think of counselling? Yeah, I like it. Anyway, thanks for talking with us. Safe lads. The time was 7 pm on the 19th of November 2010. The location Wood Street, Barnet. Two youths murdered a 16 year old in an attempted mugging. This CCTV footage was sent to us by the Metropolitan Police. The footage shows before the shooting. I was woken that night by gunshots. I saw a gang of youths legging it down an alleyway. I looked down and I saw this boy lying on the ground. There was a pool of blood around him. I called the police and they pronounced him dead at the same time. The 
it's ridiculous. I don't think enough's being done to prevent events like this from occurring, to be honest. Barnet hasn't seemed to be so tragic. It's made me think nowhere safe anymore. The investigation has gone on since October. Four have been charged and are housed with the families of the victim. We're going to be talking to a senior police officer, PC Thompson. Research has shown you have committed the most and they're the worst kind of offenders. Uh, they are to an extent. Uh, I mean, they tend to commit more minor crimes, such as petty robbery, vandalism, but more and more they are committing serious crimes such as knife and gun crime. What about gangs? You do tend to commit uh, a lot of crimes if they're in groups so we're always on the lookout for gang culture um, but there, there isn't a great deal of uh, rival clashes between um, gang group, groups of gangs. What are the police doing to tackle youth crime? We are setting up youth clubs to get possible um, offenders off the streets um, and uh, a new government, government proposal suggests that we should have um, we should be able to confiscate offenders personal possessions such as iPods and, and phones etc. It sounds like the police are doing a lot. Do you think other ideas such as long prison sentences are a good idea? Uh, I do agree with you, but it's up to the government to make these decisions. <laughs> it sounds as though the police are doing a lot to help tackle youth crime, but is Barnet doing enough? Um, yes, yeah. yeah, but I think I think they are doing are doing enough, but um, it's like it's like they're, they're doing enough in some areas, but in particular areas they are not. Youth crime continues to be a major problem in the UK. Thousands of youths die each year as a result. So the question is, will youth crime continue to be a problem? Well, most likely. Until the government and the council take more efficient measures, we can only hope that things can change.